Welcome, race fans, to the Friday Night B-Car Showdown pre-race show, where tonight we're going to be working the finale for the Top Split guys. They roll into Kentucky for race six of six. It's week 11 in iRacing. Week six here for the Top Split guys. Got a tight points battle, but not sure if all of our competitors are going to show up. Can't get in the field yet, so we'll get you updated on that here in a few moments. First of all, though, let's take a quick look back, man. I'm going to hop in this hot tub time machine right here behind me. Rewind. Two weeks ago, we were in Michigan for Top Split action where it was Robert Hall. Robert Hall comes away with the win in a, in a full green flag race. My goodness, man, it turned into fuel mileage just like it does in real life in NASCAR at that track often. Uh, Robert Hall comes home with the win. And guess what? Tuesday in Michigan, he comes away with the win in the pro race. Kentucky, not Michigan. A lot of similarities. We'll see if Robert Hall shows up tonight. He could be a big-time player. Last week, though, we were, uh, we were nighttime racing, man, in NASCAR's backyard at Charlotte Motor Speedway under the lights where Magnus LeSean put on a clinic, man, becomes another new ETV winner on the Friday Night Beat Car Showdown Series. So, add a boy to him. With the season one and down, let's take a look, quick look over here at the official Beat Car standings where Brandon Schmidt has been leading the way now for the past few weeks, but it has tightened up. Jason Carbillage is only 24 points back. This is as of Monday night. I don't know what the points look like now, but as of Monday night, they were 24 points apart. This race right here might be the deciding factor in a lot of these top 10 point standings. Matt Witten sits third. Byron Daly fourth. David Cater's going to round your top five. Brad Mayhar in sixth. Thomas Smith seventh. Kenneth Dancer in eighth. Brandon Bowie ninth. Round at your top 10 is going to be Brian Macklin. Now let's take a peek over to our top split official, or excuse me, top split ETV Friday night standings, where Armando Vargas took the lead from Jeffrey Parker last week. It's Jeffrey missed the race. He leads David Cater by just three points. Word is Cater's not going to make it tonight, and Armando Vargas has been fantastic. So I don't know. We'll have to see if those guys show up and, and which ones don't. Jeffrey Parker sits third. He's got EJ O'Rourke one point behind him. That's a tight battle there. Brad Mayhar sits in fifth with really no contest around him. Comstock sits. David Comstock, rather, sits sixth place. He's got a comfortable lead over the guys behind him. But look at this. Seventh, eighth, ninth. All one point apart, and then you got Jared Crawford with two wins. He's sitting in tenth. He's just a couple points behind them. So we got some action going on with their point standings for sure. A lot of stuff going down tonight. It's Friday the thirteenth. Are you kidding me? Couldn't ask for a better better day for race, man. There's going to be some boogie oogie and some some horror story action out here. Looking forward to it. What we got to do right now, though, before we get in the field, let's go ahead and send it on trackside for national anthem. We'll be right back after this. Oh, say can you see? By the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the
hey, dude, are you ready to rock and roll? If that's cool, then you need to do it over at HD Radio Network. HD Radio Network, four stations broadcasting 24-7 with everything from metal favorites to the 80s classic rock like legendary Leonard Skinner, Electric Light Orchestra, Foreigner, and bone-rattling, skull-crushing rock and roll on hard-driving radio. And partnered with Nuff World Simulation Gaming, check out the HD Radio Network's Nuff Radio with Bear Factory, Stone Temple Pilots, Def Leppard, and a whole lot more. HDRadioNetwork.com. Take your pick and rock your brains out, dude. All right, race fans. We're here, man, Kentucky, and I'm just taking a look at this field. Oh my gosh, we have this is probably this is probably going to be the mega split of the season, and I kind of expected it with Milwaukee being next week for the final season of i racing, uh, you know, or final week rather of the season for i racing. It's not a really popular track for big splits, so for all these guys that are running in the points for the official standings, they knew they had to run tonight, and here they are. I'm looking just at a glance through the field. I think. It looks like about seven or eight of your top ten runners in the point standings uh, are here tonight. This is just this is a massive field. I got the businessman, man. The businessman, Sean Bickle, up in the booth with me, man. Get used to this cat. We're going to be working his Sunday night races next season in the Sunday night road to pro in the cup car. Businessman, you got me, buddy? Yeah, absolutely, uh, Jesse. Man, I'm looking forward to Sunday nights, and, uh, you know, these splits have been great. I did a couple races with you. I know we did Texas and uh, did some trucks also at Texas, and uh, looking forward to it, man. And uh tell you what, big split tonight. I, we were just talking uh, on the whisper here and, uh, you know, got some big players in here, and a great championship battle as well. Uh, you know, I'm getting back into it uh, here now. U- UPS and all the uh, hard work or uh, long work is over, I guess. But uh, three points separating these top two, so uh, looks like these guys are getting ready to grid. And I'm looking for a great race in my home track, Jesse. That's that's right, man. That's right. You don't wear no shoes. You are from Kentucky, aren't you, brother? <laughs> Absolutely. Tip four. No, this is an amazing track. It really is. I, you know, I wasn't sure about this track when when they released it and I first tried it out. I wasn't too sure if I was going to dig it, man. But after running some laps around it, it really is a neat. It really is a neat track. Really bumpy. It's got a lot of character to it. Real wide. Oh man, we we should see some fantastic racing tonight, especially with the crowd we got in here. Let's go ahead and start running through this field, man. On the pole. With a strong run last week, uh, or excuse me, two weeks ago at Michigan, he's on the pole tonight at Kentucky. Dylan Duvall with a blazing 32.068. Outside him, Brody Crotch, Crotch, Sucky, Crotch, Ducky. Yeah, and start, starting on the inside of row number two in the third position in that AC Delco Chevrolet, the number five of Michael Conti. Starting outside of him, the Budweiser Chevrolet, number six, Thomas Smith. Your official point standing leader in these cars, Brandon Schmidt in the two car. Man, he's starting inside line in fifth place. Outside him, teammate of his, number one car, Matt Witten. Starting seven is going to be the number 10, my favorite number. It's going to be Phil Juring. Starting eight, the 16 of Dustin Montgomery. Our ETV Friday night official B-Car top split point standings leader. That's a mouthful. That's to a 26. Armando Vargas has been racing a lot with this guy this week, man. He's been very, very good. Look out for him in ninth. Outside him, 25, Kenneth Dancer. Yeah, and then starting 11th, Jesse Sorry is going to be A.J. Brown and confident here tonight. I know he's got a good setup underneath. And starting 12th is going to be Justin Brooks in the number 12. Yeah, Casey Malone in the 13 car is going to start 13th place. Outside him is going to be the 8 of Chris Overland. Starting 15th to 27 of Trevor Edwards. 16th to 24 of Brandon Atkinson. Yeah, Dwayne Vincent in the 11 is going to start 17th. Outside him is going to be the 15 of Alex Chambrone. And we're about to get this thing underway as this pace car is going to get out of the way. We'll keep you updated. We got a, I mean, all the guys behind him are gunslingers. We got gunslingers through this whole field. Oh, my goodness. Can you feel it? Friday the 13th. Oh, my gosh. Pace car's about to get out of the way. It's about to go down. Green flag is in the air. They're off and away. Great start. Bad boy. Let's crank it up one time, brother.
this man. I tell you what, Dylan Navarro, Pole oh, Series. Oh, trouble. we got. Yeah, we got leader. Trouble. Sure. Sorry, Jesse, the leader, the number nine, Dylan Duvall. He got the wall coming out of turn number two. That allowed seven of Brody Kostecki to uh, go on by. So uh, Dylan Duvall trying to gather that Hamlin Chevrolet back up. And right now it looks like the number five of Michael Conte. He has gotten by in the second. So uh, moving the pole center, Dylan Duvall back to third right now. They motor through one and two. Yeah, I, I ain't at one pop of skin, man. I was just getting ready to talk about how good he was looking here on his mile and a half track. And, man, yeah, you're absolutely right. Went for a big slide. Don't see any damage on the car. He looks to be okay. Close call for sure. But, yeah, that's going to shift some things around, no doubt about it. Is most of the field is beginning to get single filed out here. We got some action back here between the 18. That's Chris Overland. Excuse me, the 8 of Chris Overland. Now looking to the inside of the 6. That's Thomas Smith on the outside. Overland on the inside as they come down into turn 1 side by side. Yeah, I absolutely. Side by side, boy, do they get close to number eight. Uh, he kind of slides up, puts the slide job on the number six of Thomas Smith. So uh, move the eight up one more spot here as they head down the backstretch. Now uh, looks like A.J. Browning in 23 in that Ohio State Buckeye Chevrolet. He's on the uh, outside right now. He's being trying. He looks like he's going to be overtaken by the 12 of Justin Brooks as they uh, motor across the line. Yeah, and he's able to slip in there right behind Justin. Looks like the guy behind him might have gave him a little bit of break. A little bit of a break. And it looks like the caution's out. I'm looking around. And they are slowing. The pace car is on the track. Not sure what the caution's for. We're going to work on digging that up. Looks like maybe Ryan Norton might have been involved in the 18. No, it looks like he checked up for it. It was in front of him. Still trying to dig this up here. Looks like, uh, not there. I don't know. We're, we're looking, race fans. <laughs> we're looking. Oh, it looks like I'm hearing E.J. O'Rourke in the 17 might have had trouble. Um, try to try to dig it back. John, did you get a peek of that, buddy? Bad boy? Yeah, I'm trying to dig it up here, Jesse. He's way back here. Yeah, you know, I don't think it was him either. We're having a really yeah, tough time finding it. Well, I can tell you this. Uh, okay, you know what? It looks like Shambrone. Shambrone. It started with uh, 15 of Alex Shambrone um, here in radio traffic. I haven't seen it for myself yet. Trying to dig it back on a laptop here. But it uh, looks like maybe it started with the 15 of Alex Shambrone and PJ, PJ Sturgis. Or Sturgis. Yeah, the three. The three and the 15 are going to make a little bit of contact, guys. And uh, 15 is going to get away in that tap out car, but it's 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 the three that's actually tapping out as he taps out on the wall right there. Big time right front fender damage for the three. Unfortunate early on here. Oh, and man, major development uh, up front. Dylan Duvall, your pole sitter. Everybody looked like they were headed down pit road. And elected to pull back out, but Dylan Duvall, remember, off of turn number two, found some trouble, and uh, he's brought that Haviland Chevrolet down pit road. Looks like he's going to bring it to the attention of his crew. Uh, but your current leader, Brandon, or excuse me, Brody Kostecki, he elected to stay out in that number seven car, uh, and also the number five of Michael Conte. Those guys at the last second, Jesse, I'm telling you, they, they barely made the cone. And uh, we're able to stay out on the track. Yeah, I caught that at a glance, man. That was a close, very close call. Trying to dig up uh, an in-race reporter here, A.J. Browning, who uh, has been doing our broadcast the last couple of weeks with us. And he'll be doing the Thursday night shows next season. He'll also be, you know, he'll be in the booth next week for the finale on the Friday night B-Car showdown. But uh, he's out here running a 23 car. We're going to try and dial him up. And yeah, we'll uh, see if we can get you an interview with the 23, A.J. Browning, who came in and pit right there. And it looks like he's going to cycle back a little bit. Uh, AJ Brown, this is the outlaw up in the booth, buddy. You got a copy? Yeah, what's up, outlaw? Hey, man, how you doing out there? Mega, mega split tonight. 23 on the car, and I know I know you well enough to know you got about a 4,300 eye rating with a 23 on the roof. Oh, my goodness. What do you expect tonight, man? How's the car feel there early on, and uh, what are you looking forward to here? Well, pretty good. Um, You know, I was expecting some aggress aggressive racing, uh, you know, being on ETV and stuff, but, uh, you know, we all seem to be doing pretty good there, and I got, got a couple laps uh, clean, and uh, I don't know. We just uh, we just made a uh, 
made a wedge change, and I'm I'm just gonna try to settle back in here and ride and uh, see what happens here. Ten four, man. Well, we'll definitely be keeping our eye on you tonight, man. Appreciate you taking the time to rap with us, and uh, we'll uh, we, we'll definitely we'll keep our eye on you, man. Good luck. Have fun out there tonight, brother. All right, so Thanks, there you man. Go. Yep. So there you go. There's AJ Brownie, man. He's uh, looks like he's lined up in about uh, looks like 18th place right here. He's going to be restarting. And, uh, you know, he's been good all week, but this is definitely, you know, I mean, a lot of these guys, you got guys throughout this field who have run a race or two throughout the week. They've been very dominant cars in the races that they've been in, and now you put them all in the same room together. And businessmen, you know what happens when you do that, man. Nobody, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's going to be chaos, yeah? Yeah, I tell you what, uh, Jesse, you know, I, I, I like the trucks and I racing and the uh, Still, I guess you could say brand new to our racing. But I've been running the trucks and uh, you know ran Kentucky, my home track. So I, you know, I absolutely love this track. Got out there and I, you know, I tell you what, these open servers like this, uh, you know, it's tough, man. Everybody's out there and it's almost like you race. You want to race clean and with respect, and you end up getting wrecked. Uh, you you kind of got to be aggressive, uh, smart, aggressive, I guess, and. Uh, you know, but this is the top split. You know, we expect to see big things from these guys and, and uh, good racing out here. And uh, you know, maybe we'll see that tonight. It's early, though, and uh, tell you what, Kentucky's still brand new. And uh, these guys still trying to get it dialed in. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Got 100 laps tonight. We're going to be hitting lap nine at the stripe this time as we're about to restart. Pace car looks in. Stickman does his thing. Flags in the air. Seven is off and away. Good start right there. He's going to get a jump on the five. And they're going to try and get his sword out back there behind. Looks like three wide. 16, 25, and 8. Three wide. 8 backs out of that wisely. My goodness, that was close all there. Yeah, down into turn number one, Brandon Kostecki. He's going to lead the group out of the uh, out of the corner, followed by the five. And now they're going to jostle down the back stretch. Got to look like the 25 of a Kenneth Dancer. BSR driver, I believe, if that name, uh, if I recognize that name right, but he's making a move on the 16. That's a battle for the sixth spot right now. Down the front stretch across the line. Bring the eight of Chris Overland into that mix as well. These guys battling hard for the sixth spot. Track position is going to be everything here, Jesse. These guys trying to get what they can on a restart and close between the 25 and 16 out there. Oh, my. Good stick a minute between them right there, buddy. They were passing notes. Close, close call. Dustin Montgomery, another one I've seen a lot this week. He's been very, very strong at 16 to Dustin Montgomery, so he's another one to look out for, as well as our fourth place runner right now in the 10 car, the captain, Phil Jury. Man, my crew chief, this guy has put together a setup for this week that is absolutely outstanding, and I'm looking for some big things tonight from the captain. Yeah, right now he is under pressure through one and two from the 16 to Dustin Montgomery right up to the back bumper of that number 10 car down the back stretch. Looks like everybody's kind of getting single foul. Uh, moved back just a couple spots and looks like we got the 11 car to Dwayne Vincent. He's making a move now on the uh, 25 of Kenneth Dancer. That's going to be a battle for a spot out of turn number four. It looks like caution maybe out on the speedway. These guys are blowing up here. We'll have to see if we can get that. Yeah. Play rewind machine on. Yeah, businessman. It's going to be the 17 of EJ work this time for sure. In big trouble. I see him, uh, you know, heading down the track, ball riding backwards with his, with his driver's side window net on the wall. Not sure how he ended up that way. But uh, tough break here for the 17. And I, I imagine there's going to be a few other guys involved in that one. Tough, tough deal here early on for the 17 team. Hey, Jerry, you got an update on that? You get a peek? Yeah, I'll tell you what, guys. Looks like uh, looks like he was in the turn here, and maybe he looks like he got into maybe the outside wall and come back down. Oh, no, 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 guys. Actually, I believe this might be the 20. Came up into the side of the 15 there. 15 into the side of the 17. EJ definitely got the bat into this one, though. Oh, uh, tough deal. As EJ O'Rourke comes in here, Fourth place in points for Friday Night B-Car Showdown. Just one point behind Jeffrey Parker, who didn't make it tonight. So he'll still pass up Jeffrey Parker. Uh, still trying to work out which guys are in here and which guys aren't. Most of the field is going to come down pit road here probably for sure this time. The question is, will Dylan Duvall? And the five is going to stay out. Most stay out. This time it's the seven, but the two is going to get a penalty. The one goes around. Holy cow, we got carnage. 
It's Friday the thirteenth, guys. You shouldn't be making quick moves like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Did you see that? Absolutely, uh, Michael. Or uh, yeah, Michael Conte at the last second uh, decided to veer back out and uh, hose Brody Kostaki. And uh, you know, I don't know if uh, hose may be the wrong word. You know, these guys are kind of getting off pit sequence here, so uh, eventually this thing hopefully will get into a green flag look. And it's going to be interesting to see how this pitch strategy stays out. But uh, nonetheless, the five of Michael Conte, AC Delco, Chevrolet out front right now. And also right behind him, the number one of Matt Whitten, he stayed out as well. And then 10, uh, Jesse, Phil Juring, you were talking about him, he stayed out as well. So, uh, you know, these guys think, hey, I don't have a whole lot of laps on my tires. Uh, I'm going to go on and keep the track position. It's been kind of a mess back in the field. Yeah, no, and I kind of like the idea of staying out right here, but, you know, I, I got to say, I, I'm all for maybe a little, you know, gamesmanship and faking a guy out, but if you're getting to the point where you're wrecking your car coming to pit road, I don't know if that's a, that maybe a little overkill. And one thing we should mention, man, the two of Brandon Schmidt, not sure yet. He is your official, official standings point leader for these cars. He crossed the cone. From my view, he crossed the cone and came back out. Now, I don't know if he's going to get a penalty or not, but there is a strong possibility the two of Brandon Schmidt may get the uh, commitment cone violation, and that would be an end of line penalty and a tough, tough deal. So we'll have to wait and see. But first, you know what we got to do? Let's take a breath real quick here, partner. Let's take a commercial break. We'll be right back after these messages. All right, welcome back, race fans. We're about to be going green here. We got a little bit of a shakeup up front after the, uh, you know, swap swaparoo up there on the pit road. Am I going to pit? Am I not going to pit? Well, the five of Michael Conti, he does not pit. He's behind the pace car. Pace car ducks in. The flag is in the air. A little bit of a slow start. Watch it. But now the five is off and away. Bad boy. Let's crank it up one time. Oh, and up and on inside right now. The 26 out of turn number two. 
Caution out on the speedway here. Once again, third caution of the night. Tough break for the 26. Got loose and member of the seven of Brody Kostecki. He was out front, titted that time. He's going to get a little bit of damage as well, but that 26, not look good. No, and that 26, she's towed up, and guess what? That's Armando Vargas. He comes in here, our points leader for the uh, 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 Friday night B-Car showdown. Top split standings, tough, tough break. Jerry, man, you got an update for us, brother? Yeah, I'll tell you what, guys. It just looks like maybe that 26 got a tad bit loose. The 7 was there. He came down into the side of that 7, and man, hit that, the 26 shot straight up to the wall, guys. A lot of damage for that 26 car, definitely, and it looks like a lot of damage for the 7. But, hey, uh, he got a nice little wall right out of that one, Jesse. Yeah, man, he sure did. That was, that's a tough break there from Mono Vargas, who's been really, really strong all week and really strong in all these races all season long, man. Tough deal for him. I'm trying to dig up uh, the captain, Phil Jerry. Captain, this is the outlaw up in the booth. You got a copy, brother? What's going on, Jesse? Hey, man, looking good out there, buddy. Uh, how, how's she feeling here early on, man? And uh, what's it like out there? You know, you guys are getting little, these little short runs, but what's the competition like, man? It's a mega, mega split out there tonight, brother. Yeah, this is a good race here. Uh, I don't know uh, what we really have with these short runs as far as the setup goes. I know I've uh, been good here all week, made some changes headed into the race. Uh, feel pretty good. I think I had something for these guys if I wanted it, but a little too early for that right now. I keep staying out and avoid the mess in the back and uh, just try to finish the race and get a good, get a good run here. 10-4, man. Well, definitely going to be keeping an eye on you. I've got an invested interest in you since you're my crew chief, man. You're the man. But we're going to be rooting for you tonight, Captain. I know we're supposed to keep it impartial, but I just can't help myself, man. I'm picking you tonight. Good luck, brother. Go do the damn thing. All right, Jesse. Thanks, bud. All right, so there you go. That's Phil Jerry. He's sitting fourth right now in the 10 car. you got Michael Conte still leading the way, and I'm um, looking to see... Trying to see how many guys we had pit. I think we did have some takers. Brandon Schmidt on pit road. I believe he did get that penalty earlier. We were worried about, so he figures, you know, might as well get made back here anyway. Might come in and get some tires. So you got the two of Brandon Schmidt down there for what looks to be an extended stay. You know, he might have got to. Wow. I just get this. I just watched the right side go up, then the left side, and then the right side again. So, you know, that's how, there's some adjustments going on with the air pressure on the right side of that car. What'd you think? Yeah, absolutely. A few guys on pit road. A.J. Browning was one of them, uh, Jesse. Uh, came in running 13th, and uh, he was the first car off of pit road. Everybody behind him also uh, pitted the 29. Uh, he was on pit road, the 18. Uh, Ryan Norton was on pit road, and the 19, David uh, Comstock, he was also on pit road. So uh, these guys pit here on lap 18. We'll make a note of that. In uh, case we go green from here, but uh, you know, before before we went to uh, the commercial and crank it up, the caution before that, the uh, guy running second right now, the number one of Matt Witt, uh, he faked he was going to go into pit road. Jesse decided at the last minute. Crew said, "Stay out, stay out." He decided to yank the wheel to the right. He ended up spinning out. Uh, lost a few spots, but they ended up giving him that spot back. Um, I don't know. I guess that's how it, it works out here in our racing, man. But uh, nonetheless, that 21 has done a loop here on the track and still running second right now. <laughs> yeah, he, he was just just warming up the tires. A little. Uh, I meant to do that. <laughs> no, I seen that too, man. That was uh, that was a deal right there. And you know, I mean, I, I kind of agree. I feel like. You know, and I know a lot of guys have issue with that. Sometimes a guy even gets in a wreck, uh, you know, in a caution, and they give the spot back to him. I think that's something that iRacing will probably take a look at in the future for sure. iRacing always in beta it seems always uh, improving, always changing, trying to get better. So, uh, you know, that's one of the little things that guys nitpick on, and, I, and I'm with you, man. I, I kind of think that if you, if you get off pace like that, you loop your car, I think you probably should be at the back. But, hey, it is what it is, and Matt Witten, we know he's got a good piece underneath him teammate points leader back there in the two car brandon schmidt all the way back in that menards car he's got a lot of cars in front of me here it's going to be interesting to see how brandon schmidt does tonight because uh you know i know and all the other guys who run in this car they see brandon schmidt they know man that dude he's real good in these cars so if anybody comes to this field man he's gonna he's gonna be him for sure this pace car he's gonna dip up out of the way here right now you got the lights off he's gonna take a take a quick left hand turn off the track he goes to a quick start off and away and a good start on the outside by Matt Whitman. 
Yeah, we can get rain start, but not good enough because Michael Conte is going to retain the lead down into turn number one. Witness has to fall in the line here. A good decision here right up to the back bumper that AC Delco Chevrolet out of turn number two. Going to try to maybe set him up down into turn number three right tucked in behind him. Still down into turn number three. No move yet. Michael Conte motors through. It looks like they're getting single file through the top five. It looks like you uh, got the number 12 Justin Brooks up on the outside and then the behind that looks like you got the sorry Dylan Duvall or excuse me the sixth of Thomas Smith. He was under pressure but all these guys decide right now just to uh, get in line. Let's put some laps in here. It's only lap 22. Yeah, no, they are. They're going to single fall out. But Trevor Edwards, man, in the 27, he's making a move. Because he's going to try and get on by the 14. He's going to complete that pass. Trevor Edwards, move him up into, uh, looks like, 12th place there. He's going to take away. But, yeah, man, it looks, for the most part, it's down. Now, up front, we got a little bit more side by side. Thomas Smith goes side by side with the driver. That's the 6 of Thomas on the outside. The 13 of Casey Malone. And then a boss house, fourth fourth driver on the inside now. Trying to get that spot. He's going to get it. If they come down to turn one, move the 13 up. Yeah, 13, Casey Malone picks up the spot, and the 6 of Thomas Smith falls back in line now. The 11 of Dwayne Benson, he's going to try to set up the 6 of uh, uh, Thomas Smith down in turn number 3. Dives down low, side by side with that both rides of Chevrolet through 3 and 4. Now 3 and 4, Jesse, you know they got those bumps down there. You get It's kind of hairy, man. You're on the edge uh, down there in 3 and 4, so you really kind of got to hang on. Uh, be careful, tiptoe through three and four, but still side by side down into turn number one, the 11 and six. Battle for the 10th spot. Yeah, I'm checking out AD Browning back here. He's back to 18th, man. He's, he's surrounded by Brandon's. Look at all those Brandon's around. Brandon six, Brandon Schmidt, Brandon Bowie. <laughs> Big stuff right there. And all those guys, all those Brandon's, rather, they're all in the top 10, the official standings, man. They're back here towards the back trying to get going as the two looks to the inside of the 23. That's Brandon Schmidt. Your points are he's trying to make a happen to get to this field. A little bit of a wobble there coming out of four, though. As AJ is going to get the momentum now down the front, coming down to one. They're still side by side. Looks like for the time being, AJ might be able to hold that position. But here comes the two again. Brandon Schmidt digging on the inside. Good hook up there coming out of turn two. Man, a lot of guys say that's a lot of problems for a lot of guys. Is coming out of turn two on the bottom of the guy outside of you. Man, she gets slurpy coming off. And uh, if you can get it hooked up and come out of turn two on the bottom underneath the guy, go ahead and you can pass. And if you can pass, you can move forward. So, Brandon Smith, look like he got a good car, but AJ actually is going to prevail in that man. Yeah. It's, a, it's a, I'll tell you what, he, is, he has lost a few spots, Jesse. Uh, going the wrong way right now in that LSU Chevrolet is the uh, 27 Trevor Edwards has gotten by the 24 Brandon Atkinson now the number 4 of Paul Kushima he tries to squeeze by as well at a turn number 4 so the 11 problems right now on that car trying to hold on for all it's worth the 25 and Kenneth Danger trying to move up as well he just hung out the drive right now through turn number 1 yeah, he sure is. He's got his hands full. Check out that four. He is moving. The cush is smoking for sure, man. Look out for Paul Kashima tonight as he moves up to 13th place. Got uh, teammates ahead of him, Brandon Atkinson and Trevor Edwards. Those guys all working together, uh, you know, coming in with similar setups for sure. So we'll have to look out for them. You got uh, Michael Conte still up here showing the that five car, man. He's got about three-quarters of a second lead now over Matt Whitten. He's clicking off real good lap times out front. His car looks real smooth. For right now, the rabbit is Michael Conte, and he's a good one. He's got these dogs, uh, you know, back here doing all they can, and for right now, it's not enough. Yeah, single foul all the way through seven spot, uh, bringing up that seven spot, the 10 car, Phil Juring. Uh, right now, he has put some distance on uh, eight spot, Justin Brooks, uh, in that number 12 car is a uh, motor through the front stretch right now so uh, these guys I think are definitely settling into a green flag look here uh, so these guys are going to need to save some tires and uh, start driving these cars and uh, take you know kind of taking it easy and uh, seeing what the, the track will give them see if somebody else is maybe going to burn their tires off but we got a battle back here for the ninth spot Thomas Smith has it Trevor Edwards, he's looking for that unsponsored Chevrolet out of turn number four, peeking to the inside. 
And uh, here we go, side by side across the stripe. That uh, unsponsored number 27, Trevor Edwards, looking to pick up the ninth spot right now. Yeah, big he does. Ooh, and, uh, almost a little contact right there. Big number on the roof and big plans in the cockpit as Trevor Edwards continues to move forward in that 27 car. And uh, Thomas Smith does a good job trying to, he almost stops bleeding. It looks like he's going to be able to the 24, Brendan Atkinson, looking to slip on by, but Thomas Smith does a good job getting back down there covering the low line. He's, he doesn't get freight trained the way uh, the 11 did. In fact, the 11 back there, Dwayne Vincent, he's starting to recover from that earlier now. He's to the inside of the 25 of Kenneth Dancer, looking to take away a 14th position, and he's going to do it and bring Brandon Schmidt the two with him. Yeah, and I tell you what, an update right now, uh, Jesse. On pit road is the number seven of Brandon Kostaki. Uh, sitting 28 spot, two laps down, heavy damage on the right side of that uh, unsponsored Chevrolet. Remember, he was involved in that last caution, so he was on pit road trying to get that car patched up. But a bad night for Brody, excuse me, Brody Kostaki. Is, uh, that car is all beat up. Yeah, it really didn't work out the way he planned it for sure got the crew down there working on it, man. I think a tire changer cut off a finger on that strap and they got a lot of work to do and they got a, a four-fingered uh, four fingered tire changer now. Up front here though, man, we got it shaking up here is the 22 of Landon Huffman's going to look to get by the 8 of Chris Moore. That's for third position. The 8 is going to shuffle the outside. It's the 16. Looks to fill the hole. Here comes Phil Jernal. Oh, big slide Whoa. by the 16. Big slide by. Now they're going to get three, three wide. wide. Goodness gracious, Phil Jernal's looking at this trying to figure out where do I go now? What do I do? back out first. Nobody blinks. They drive in three wide into turn one. Oakland not leaving a lot of room. The 22 is going to come down and put the 16 almost on the apron. Gut Montgomery is going to be the guy who's going to back out right there and save all their lives. Good stuff. Good racing right there. Yeah, great racing. Now you want to know how to race three wide. That's how you do it, man. You pick a lane and you stick to it and you give the other guy plenty of room don't try to drive over your head but right now here comes the number 10 he's going to try to make it three wide down the front stretch on the 22 not going to happen this time but i tell you what that eight car holding strong right now trying to hold off that 22 car through one and two side by side right there side by side behind them it's 10 and 16 get side by side here comes the 13 and here comes your pole sitter the number nine and dylan duvall remember he was on pit road early back up to eight he's in this mix this is a hornet's nest at three and four Oh, yeah, and you know what? You can throw the 27 to Trevor Edwards into it, man. Here he is in ninth place. He pulls right back to the back of our pole center, drawn down with a run. See if he can make a move into one. He might try as he looks now to the inside, coming into turn one. He's got a quarter. Nine comes down a little bit. It looks like Dylan DeVall in the ninth got a good power coming in. He might be able to hold him off. All right here comes the 27 now, and I'm hearing we may have, uh, yeah, we've got caution on the track. Caution is on the track, trying to find it. I think the 20. Yeah, the 20s tits up out there in the in the picnic grounds. Not sure how he ended up there, but uh, we are in fact under caution. And the fuel situation is going to be very interesting. We'll get to that in a moment, but uh, we have to dig up the replay for the 20. Once again, a run hard. I believe he was involved in the caution earlier that got EJ in trouble. Jerry, man, you get a look at that. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what, Jesse. It looks like he just flat out lost it in the turn. Rear end of the car came out. I, I don't see any damage, though. looks like he's clean and clear and back off and running, but he just lost it. No one around, no help. Yeah, man, that is uh, that is a definition of running out of talent, unfortunately. But let's be fair. He was involved in a wreck earlier, so while the car may not look too bad, there might be uh, there might be some damage in the inner workings of that car. But these are important stops here. We're just talking about it. We're working lap 36 right now of 100. The fuel window is like 61 to 64 laps. You can stretch it a little bit further. I mean, this this right here, if this thing goes green from here, and, it, and you know, like you said, partner, it had the looks of a race that could go green. Man, uh, this this is going to be close because as fast as these guys are pushing each other, I don't know if 61, 64 is going to be realistic. It might be more like 58 to 61. So, you know, it, this is going to be close. Is the whole field will most certainly come down for a big gulp right here, and you may see some coming back for a splash second time around. The five, Michael Conte, going to lead them down pit road. Of course, everybody on the lead lap is coming. We don't have anybody uh, a lap down looking to get their laps back. So these are going to be this could be important right here. I mean, there's a good chance it could be several more pit stops if we see caution flags, but this could be it. This could be the money stop. Crews know it, and they're going to get to work on these guys right here. 
Five in. Jack goes up. Right side's going on. Jack Nant runs around. Left side going up for the five of Michael Conte, who led him onto pit road. Jack's down. He's off and away. Looking like he's going to win the race off pit road. But here comes the one to Matt Witten. It's going to be close. No. The five of Michael Conte. He comes in first. He leaves first. Witten comes in second. He leaves second. So good job by both those teams. And it looked like uh, I didn't really see any big movers in either direction on pit road. So all the pit crews look to have done a pretty good job right there and, and a very important pit stop. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody on the pit road, Jesse, and uh, getting a big gulp of fuel and four tires because this may possibly be the last stop of the night, depending on how these guys stretch it. And, you know, Jesse, like you said, these guys can can maybe stretch it. So does this change the way that these guys race? Uh, you know, are these guys going to go out and floor it? Or are you, are you going to start backing up the corner trying to save that fuel and maybe, hey, the guy in front of me is going to run out. You know what I mean? No, I agree, man. It, it really, you know, I mean, it. oftentimes when you get in these situations where it, it becomes a deal where, man, I could make it on fuel, but it's going to be close, That's you're exactly right, part of that's what happens. Guys tend to back it off a little bit. And then that really, you know, emphasizes on us getting that scenario where we don't get a caution because everybody's being so cautious. So we'll, we'll see for sure. But you know what? I got Trevor Edwards, man. He's, uh, I'm trying to dial him up. Trevor Edwards, this is the outlaw up in the booth. You got a copy, brother? Yeah, I got you, bud. Hey, man, 27 on the roof, dude. You're making a strong showing here tonight. You look real good running those guys down, getting up to that uh, that lead group up there, man. How's the car feel? How how you feeling out there tonight, brother? Oh, it's great when you get behind somebody. As soon as we get out in front of somebody, it gets a little bit loose. Uh, we're trying to go into fuel conservation mode right now just in case it doesn't go. Once it goes, caution-free rest of the way, which I doubt, but there's always that possibility. Yeah, and that's what I was going to be my next question is how you looking, man? How you looking on fuel? What's the crew chief saying? And, uh, you know, you, you think if it does go green, you think you think you can do it from here? Oh, yeah. Um, this whole week we've been making it from 36 to 37 on fuel. And the uh, cost came out at 35, so 36 we pitted. We can definitely save a lap. I'm shutting it off and coasting and everything I can right now. 10-4, man. We've been, uh, we've been keeping our eye on you. You've been doing real good, man. Uh, Represent real well. With the big number on your roof, you're running uh, way above expectations, man. So good job on that. We're going to keep our eye on you. Good luck tonight, brother. Thanks, but I hope you get a top five out of this for BHM. 10-4, boss. All right, so there you go. I just Trevor Edwards. Looks like he's sitting. Uh, he's running 10th right now. He's got teammates all around him. And, uh, yeah, this guy's putting in a good show. But Michael Conte, man, right so far, or Conte, not sure how you say his name exactly, but, man, Regardless of what his name is, you can just call him the man so far. He is he is definitely, uh, and that was the first chance to really get a run in on these tires and see, you know, what what uh, who had what right there. And Michael Conti, was get, his lead was getting bigger and bigger as that run went on. So, yeah, I think the five, the five is definitely in real good shape. The one also looked very, very good. And then the group you had from third to about 12th, 13th place, I mean, those guys looked very equal. So, I mean, that's where, that's where uh, you're going to see your quote-unquote phone booth action, would you say? Yeah, absolutely. Michael Conti uh, definitely showing he's got the car to beat right now. Uh, he pulled out to almost the second lead uh, over Matt Whitten. And, uh, but, yeah, you're right. Behind that, man, was a hornet's nest. Uh, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. These guys were mixing it up hard. But uh, being so close on fuel, Jesse, I think it's going to change. Uh, hopefully, it's going to change these guys' mindset. And, uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's going to get boring for the fans because these guys, you know, are going to be wanting to uh, save the fuel and, and just race clean, make the laps, hit their marks, and do what they need to do to get to the end of this thing without having to maybe hit pit road again in case it goes green. Uh but you know it, it, it's hard as a racer, as a racer uh, Jesse, and you know this too. We all race out racing. Uh, you want to pass the guy in front of you, and that's not going to save you any fuel. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right, man. And especially in a field like this, in, in a scenario like this, where this race really is going to decide many of your top ten point standings in the official I racing standings. Despite the fact that there's a whole other week after this, this is the big one. These guys, they know that. So, you know, nerves are playing a factor for sure tonight. Who's going to be ice? As the pace car gets out of the way, Michael Conte is going to lead us. Great start by the five. He's off and away again. Kind of catches that guy sleeping behind him, the 22 of Landon Huffman. He's got a big old gap right there. Man. Fantastic. 
Yeah, Michael Conte, he has been on the mark all night long as he jumps out uh, right now to about a six car length lead as they're side by side behind him for second spot. The one of Matt Whitten and Landon Huffman in the 22 down the back stretch. Bring the 16 and Dustin Montgomery up into there. He's going to try to make it work on the outside. And remember that number eight car? He was having problems earlier. He gets a great run out of four. He's going to make it three wide down the front stretch across the stripe. Battle for third spot, three wide down into one. Yeah, the 22 leaks first, and that causes them to stack up behind him at the 10. And Phil Jury gets into a contest. Oh, 22 around. travel 22. 22 through the parachute out the back. Captain. Captain Phil had nowhere to go right there, man. Tough deal. Everybody else does a fantastic job. But, uh, yeah, that three wide made the 22 of Landon Huffman panic. Landon Huffman pulled the chute, jacked it up there, and it slowed him down going into turn one. And they're just, man, there was no time for all those guys behind him. And, uh, unfortunately, for the 22 team, he's he took a big dinger right there. I don't know. You know, without seeing the replay, I don't know how many other guys were involved as far as heavy damage. I think the 22 is going to be the only one that's going to take a big lick right there. Jerry, you got nothing for us, brother? Yeah, guys, actually, I'm taking a look at this. It looks like maybe uh, the 10 and the 22 might have got into each other. Little up, little down on that. 22 definitely was the loser on that one, though, Jesse. Yeah, well, the tw they were three wide in front of the 10, and when the 22, you know, slammed on the brakes before the entrance to the corner right there out of the start. It just, you know, it put the guys behind him in a situation where there was really nowhere to go. Man, I'm going to tell you what, though. I am, I'm extremely impressed with the rest of the drivers that were around that because I'm going to tell you what, after he done his little spin and came down there, that entire track was filled up all around him, and every single one of those guys managed to miss him. Yeah, no, they really did do a great job. And I didn't catch that first guy who was right there behind the 22, man, but he was right there in the danger zone and somehow still avoided both not hitting the car and also not locking up his brakes and, and, and trying to avoid him. Is we got some gamesmanship with guys faking their coming, but I imagine most feel like if you were borderline before, if you thought maybe I can make it, it's going to be close – now you can make it with some room to spare if you just do some good saving right here. And, they, you know, they all will. So now, businessman, that opens it back up. If it goes green from here, it's going you know, to be a slobber knock because they don't got to worry about the fuel as much now. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like the uh, 21, he is uh, going to be on pit road. And also the 29 and the 18, uh, Jerry Wolf. Yeah, hey, I'll tell you what, Outlaw, that was the 13 car, buddy, that took a took a nice little uh, nice little ride there. Casey Malone managed to skip those guys, so good hands award goes to him tonight for that one, guys. Oh, yeah, no, I didn't catch the car, but, dude, I tell you what, that was really, really great heads-up driving um, for sure. So, yeah, attaboy to Casey Malone for sure. You know what I do right here? Lights are still on. Nobody's going to be pitting. It's a lot of coasting around. Let's take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back, race fans. 
we're still working caution here. Lap 44 of 100. Fuel, not really an issue now should this thing go green. So that's a good deal. You got all these guys out here kill, killing the ignition, riding around the clutch, saving what they can, get themselves uh, a little bit of breathing room. But uh, out front, man, it's still Michael Conti. Matt Witt in second. You got Chris Overland in third. Dustin Montgomery sitting fourth. And captain Phil Jerry, round edge top five. Yeah, Jesse, and uh, sorry, man, I apologize. I had to run back to the buffet we got here in the ETV booth that uh, John Westlink provided us with. Had to get a few of those rims, ribs and uh, a few uh, shrimp off the barbie here. And I uh, got to thank uh, Tracy Slip Robinson for working the uh, buffet here tonight. But uh, <laughs> been a pretty good race. I don't know a few more cautions of what I would have expected here at Kentucky. Uh you know, I don't know, but it's it. I think this is the point now, Jesse, where it, it gets interesting, and uh, we're gonna have to see who's got what and uh, see who's gonna save what. Oh yeah, no, it's definitely gonna get it's gonna get crazy now. I think I think you don't have to save much now, so it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be balls to the wall for sure. I'd imagine, uh, you know, these guys are you know these are top level dudes. Every one of them in this field, man, from start to start to back, every every guy in here is is a proven winner and a solid racer. So, yeah, you know, we'll see how many of them, uh, you know, it's going to be about nerves. I talked about it before, though. It's really in a field like this, it really comes down to who can, because all these guys are talented and got good setups. It really, really comes down to is who can focus on the night, who can, who can stay sharp, who's not going to make bad decisions. And in a field like this, it's oftentimes tough for a lot of guys. So, you know, that, that's going to be the big thing right here is who can stay focused. Yeah, absolutely. These guys lined up getting ready to go back at it. But I tell you what, the uh, leader, Michael Conti in that AC Delco Chevrolet, he has been tough all night long, Jesse. He's been money on the restarts, man. It just uh, pulls out, gets some car lengths on these guys, and these guys get the racing behind them, and then he's got it made. Uh, that's all he needs to do. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I think he is the car to beat right now obviously running in the top spot but he has shown that he is tough no he absolutely has for sure and we better keep our eye on the sixth or excuse me the nine until the ball restart sixth right here he's finally working his way back up after starting on pulling having a miscue early pace car is off flag is out look at that start by the one of matt whitney did not get caught sleeping this time is you know he's still hanging on the corner of the five of michael conte heading down to turn one that's gonna be the first time that's happened all night five clears him but not by much yeah, and the two car of Brandon Schmidt back here. He's running in 11. Uh, he got a real good start. Went to the outside of uh, somebody. Couldn't see who it was, but now shoots down to the inside, down the back stretch into turn number three, trying to make things happen right now. He's three wide. He's got A.J. Browning in the middle. He's got the tap out Chevrolet up top. Looks like he is hitting pit road to Brandon Schmidt. Trouble on that Menards uh, Chevrolet right now. He is hitting pit road. Obviously, a penalty or something on that car. But uh, that might may eliminate his chances here tonight. Uh, then number two, Brandon Schmidt. Oh, it's been a tough, tough night for the official B car points leader, man. Tough, tough night for sure. Very, uh, very eventfully. Still got a clean car, but man, it has not been a tough car. It's definitely been Friday the 13th for Brandon Schmidt here tonight. We'll see. Maybe he can get the cautions to help him out. But without him, yeah, I'd say he's he's in, he's in tough a tough spot right now. As he's definitely going to go one lap down. Yeah, I'm back up front, Michael Conti still showing the way as we work lap 48, two laps from halfway right now. Jesse through one and two. Matt Witten giving chase, but losing ground uh, right now is the number eight of Chris Overland. He is under fire from the fourth place runner, 16 of Dustin Montgomery in that U.S. Army Chevrolet through three and four right now, picking to the inside, trying to get a run on that number eight car. Out at turn number four in the eight. Oh, gets a little bit loose. Tries to uh, maybe give him a little bit of a slide job. And nonetheless, the 16 is going to get the position down into one. Battle for the third spot and give it to the 16 right now, Jesse. Yeah, man, good stuff right there. As the 16 came up, he took the air off the spoiler of the eight coming out of floor and gave him a little, bit of, a little case of the wobbles. Great catch there by the eight of Chris Orland, though, as well. Back behind those guys, man, you got... Uh, you got Dylan Duvall, who's moved his way up into fifth place. He's rounded out your top five right now in that nine car. Bill Jury running sixth. Brandon Atkinson running seventh. Casey Malone in eighth. Trevor Edwards ninth. Paul Kishima tenth. And get this, from sixth to tenth, every one of those guys is a team. Every one of those guys are on the same team uh, working together.
together and they got AJ Brown sitting back there in 13 as well. Another one of their teammates. So Boss House Motorsports represent really well. A little bit further to go, guys. Yeah, down the back stretch, I'm watching the number six car running in 11. That's Thomas D. Smith and that Budweiser Chevrolet. Had a great starting spot here tonight, but right now he's got the number two who was just on pit road serving a penalty, remember, uh, running in between him and your points leader, uh, or excuse me, your uh, pole sitter tonight, filling the ball. And uh, with that number two car right now, remember, he is fast and uh, a couple laps down, so uh, he may play a factor in the way this thing shapes out back here in the field, is Yeah, tough. He hangs up on you, right? He goes two laps down. Tough, tough, tough to get that back for sure. We're going to hit 50 at the stripe this time. Conte. Conte. I don't know why I can't say that name. Still showing the way, man. Michael Conte in that five car. Definitely is meant to be. Dustin Montgomery's going to be. He moves his way up into second place, and he's starting to draw down now, Dustin Montgomery. On the five of Michael Conte. The last time we see Dustin Montgomery in ETV Friday Night Showdown race was the first top split race of this season. Week two at uh, Texas. Man, he was awesome with Dustin Montgomery. Another mile and a half track, a little different than his, his track here, but he was the man to beat for sure. And uh, he had internet issues, got, got a trip to the disco before the end of the race, and unfortunately, uh, that you know, it didn't work out good for him as he ended up finishing in the back. But he was the man to beat, and now he's playing beer games with the five. Yeah, and got your pole sitter, Dylan Duvall. He is back to eighth spot right now and losing spots in a hurry. The 24, Brandon Atkinson, the 13, of Casey Malone go by. And now the 27, Trevor Edwards, trying to make a move on him as well down into turn number three and uh, count Paul, the four of Paul Kushiba in the mix. But uh, Dylan Duvall going the wrong way, losing some spots. Up in front of that, though, here comes the 13, Casey Malone trying to make a move on the uh, 24 and he does so move Casey Malone up into the sixth spot that 13 car is on a tear right now and coming to the front is he yeah man he got that good hand board now he's trying to get a good feet aboard too he's doing the river dance on the pedals and making it work real good as the 13 to Casey Malone for sure as he's uh, beginning to try and draw down on Phil Jerry in fifth they're racing back there Brandon Schmidt back there he's the we just mentioned two left down he's side by side with Trevor Edwards really close in three and four they almost make contact. The four Paul Kashiba has gotten by both of these guys up in front of him. Now the 27 Trevor Everett is going to clear the lap car for Brandon Schmidt. You know, it's got to be such a tough deal for him, man. He's the points leader. This was a big race. Uh, the good news for him, the only guy who's close to him in points in the iRacing B car standings is Jason Carvelich, and, and unfortunately he's not here tonight. So that is a good deal for, for Brandon Schmidt as uh, he begins to play now with the rear of the 27. Um, so yeah, so, so as far as that goes, uh, you know, I don't know exactly, but I, I would rather guess, despite the fact that Brandon Schmidt's not having the kind of race he was looking for, I think he's probably still in a good, good position as far as being his uh, B-car stands. Yeah, absolutely, good position. Uh, work in lab number 56, and let's focus our eyes up to the top spot right now. Michael Conte, he still has the lead right now down the back stretch, but that 16 of Dustin Montgomery, he is all over the back of that AC Delco Chevrolet right now through turn number three and four right up to the back bumper, trying to size him up, trying to make a move, peeks to the inside down the front stretch here. He's going to be side by side across the stripe. He's going to have position down into turn number one. So new leader here, lap number 57, but Conte says not so fast, uh, Mr. Number 16, but uh, here he goes, 16, pulls the slide job out in two. New leader, Dustin Montgomery, is Yeah, man. The old vet to the front, man. Looking real good right there is the 16 Dustin Montgomery. And the five, he didn't make it easy, man. He definitely made a tough one for sure. And, uh, we, you know, we were not, not going to kill him out just yet. But, yeah, Montgomery, man, he looks really good. Matt Witten back there, uh, third place. Orberlin in fourth. Phil Jurian still running fifth. Is now Phil Jurian in a bit of trouble. The train begins to go by the 10 of Phil Jurian. I'm not sure what happened. Something just happened with the 10. Right as I was going back to look at him, he's uh, looks like maybe a little bit of. He looks like he might have got loose there. Almost hit the pit road on schedule there under green. Lost all his momentum, and unfortunately, man, he's going to get passed by massive, massive amount of guys right here to the back. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be 41 laps when these guys cross the stripe, but the Phil Jurek still number 10, holding it in 10th spot right now. He's got A.J. Browning, and I know they're uh, 
probably pretty good friends, I believe. Maybe even running the same setup. Jesse can probably elaborate on that. But uh, plenty of time still here at the Kentucky Motor Speedway uh, for Phil Juring to uh, try to gather his momentum back up. But uh, up in front of that, things are heating up, man. I tell you what, between that number four of Paul Shiva running in eighth and the number nine of Dylan DeVall, your pulse that are out of turn number four, DeVall keeps peeking to the inside. It's not going to happen this lap. But I uh, tell you what, these, it's heating up up front. As here comes the 27, we just interviewed him, Trevor Edwards. These guys are starting to race. I don't think they're thinking about saving anything, is it? No, no, they're not. As the two gets a big slide now. The two have ran with a big slide out of turn two down the back. He gives room to the six now. Looks like the 11 going to have to look to the outside. Now the two races off into the corner in the three and four, man. His tire can't be feeling good. We'll keep an eye on the two. Oh, the right rear is really shaky for him right here as he gets another wobble out of turn four. Begin to stack these guys up behind him. Tough, tough night, man. Tough night for Brad Smith so far. Goodness gracious. Yeah, man. These these uh, these front two right here, they're definitely beginning to check out. Montgomery showing the way. Conti right behind him. Matt Witten, he's one, almost one and three-quarter seconds back now. It's a group of three guys. You have Matt Witten, Chris Orwell, and Casey Malone. That group of three... They're uh, about a second and three quarters back from our, our lead pair, so. Yeah, but they got company coming, man. There's some fast cars behind them. Yeah, absolutely, Matt Witten running in the third spot. I tell you what, he's already done a, a loop on the track, <laughs> making it to the pit road. Uh, but that didn't, hasn't seemed to uh, to phase that car. Is uh, running in third right now and uh, trying to put some distance. On the two cars behind him who are battling right now for the fourth spot, the 13 and Casey Malone. Remember we said he was on a tear on the move as he looks to the inside of the eight and Chris Overland out of turn number four. Has position right now, still side by side. Not sure who's going to be scored in fourth at, the, at that lap. It was too close to call. Still side by side down into turn number one. Giving each other plenty of room. This is how professionals race right here. Giving each other plenty of room out of turn number two. Still side by side. Here comes the 24, Brandon Atkinson. He wants a little piece of the action here. Down into turn number three. Still side by side, Jesse. That eight oh, car doesn't want to give it up. Doing a great job on the outside. Yeah, no, this is good stuff, man. Really good stuff. As Orland is going to be able to slide in that eight car. He slides in. Now he's going to look to the inside. Oh, throws the a block. Oh, the 13 moves is up the hill. Business time is about to go down. Casey Malone's not going to be too happy about that as they come off in a turn one and two side by side once again. This time they flip the script, put the eight on the inside, 13 to the outside. Nothing to do with that. Now the eight's going to try again down the back stretch, but it looks like Casey Malone, he's going he's gonna to hold that, hold him off for now, for sure. And, uh, yeah, man, that, <laughs> that's definitely business time right there. He needs a little bit of the bumper. Matt Witten. He's watching it all go down his mirror in that one car up in front of these guys. He's watching this go down. He's going, oh my goodness, I hope they stay back there. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I tell you what, though, that uh, number one car of Matt Witten better start looking at his rearview mirror because I think the 13 in case of Malone, he has a strong car. He's, You know, it's not going to be easy when you get into the top five, Jesse. And uh, he had to work for that spot around the eight of Chris Overland, but uh, he was able to do that. And now he sets his Ooh. sights on the one of Matt Witten. And, uh, man, I tell you what, close quarters behind it, that eight car. He doesn't want to get up, give up any track position. You're going to have to work to get past that eight car. Kind of reminds me of how beers work, Jesse. Yeah, yeah, man. Get a little wide, but I got to tell you, I know that guy in sixth place at 24, Brand X, and that's the boss. Brandon the boss, Atkinson. And, you know, he, he's definitely, uh, he's patented. He's trademarked the old bump and dig. So, you know, you ought to be, Overland ought to be a little careful, you know what I mean, cut guys off like that because he's got one behind him that won't put up with it for too long. We'll see how that works out. Yeah, right now, uh, looks like in front of that, the, uh, or excuse me, behind that, the number four of Paul Gushiba, he's on the move trying to get around the 24 of Brandon Atkinson. Battle for the uh, sixth spot. Battle no more. Move Kushiba into the sixth spot through turn one and two. 24 settles in behind him back into seven. Dylan Duvall, the 27, Trevor Edwards. That's uh, eighth and ninth right there. It looks like Dylan Duvall tries to make a move on the 24. Not going to happen. Uh, so these guys mixing it up and doing a great job uh, cleanly. But, man, back up in front of that, Jesse, I tell you what, you got the 13 of Case Malone 
making a move right now and man made it look easy around the one of that but Casey Malone into the third spot that car is on the move these guys up front better watch out yeah he's really good but I gotta tell you man the front two are still running 33.3s right here late into this run Casey Malone is, is one of the other he's one of the fastest guys in the tracks aside from them He's running mid, you know, low and mid fives. So the front two are definitely in a world of their own for sure. But uh, yeah, Casey Malone been looking really good right here, driving up into third. And you know, he just he might need a caution. We'll see. He's got a long way to go. We're only we're about to hit uh, 30 to go this time by at the stripe. So long way to go. You know, we'll see. But uh, those front two, man, they have a three, nearly three and a half second lead right now over third oh. place Casey Malone. Three wide down the back stretch into turn number three, the four of Paul Kashiba. He's going to make it a two for one. He's going to try to anyway. He gets around the one of Witt. The eight of Overland's going to put up a fight on the outside, but that four, man, he made a great move uh, to get inside of these guys as they cross the strike, working lap number 70, 30 to go here at Kentucky Motor Speedway. And that four car on the move as well, and Overland not giving it up easy, but looks like he's going to have to this time out of turn number two. And uh, move the four car, Paul Kashiba, up Ooh, into trouble, the sorry. top five. Trouble, just Yeah, they do a Brandon Schmidt once again. Once again, big, big trouble. Looks like he's going to keep. He's going to gather it up. No caution. He's going to come out for him. Good job, Sam. But, man, he gets out of shape. I see him on the corner. He gets out of shape coming out of the uh, turn two down the back. Almost hits the six. He doesn't want to hit the six. So he pulls a classic move, and he just turns that thing back in the wall, hammers the outside wall. Uh, really, really saved Thomas Smith's life in the six right there because he was coming right for him. And, unfortunately, that's going to be it for Brandon Smith tonight. Tough, tough deal. But uh, you know what? Dude's ran a fantastic – not a great race tonight, but this is not the way his season's gone. He's ran fantastic all season as Brandon Smith. He's been leading the points for about a month now in iRacing. And looks like he's got a good shot at being your P-Car champion. So we'll keep you updated on that next week. Yeah, absolutely. And I tell you what, your leaders are starting to uh, – to catch up with some of the lab traffic as uh, looks like the 26 gets out of the way. Uh, good smart move, good sportsmanship there from the 26. But the, the, the 16, Dustin Montgomery, still your leader, and he has a beer full of Michael Conte. Michael Conte has not gone anywhere, Jesse James. He has stayed right in his tire tracks, right in his mirror. He is he has said, you know what, we got 27 laps to go across the stripe. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to put up a fight, and you better hope you got a good long run set up underneath that <laughs> Army Chevrolet. Oh, absolutely, man. No, it, it's looking good. And we got the one of Matt Witten, man, he is really dropping anchor right now. That thing, apparently, he's, he's nearing 34-second laps at this point in the run. And uh, we got one in trouble over there. Mondo Vargas, the 26. The leaders all begin to go by. Mondo Vargas, the 26, who runs 29 laps down. He's coming out. He's, I, I imagine just trying to get by P.J. Sturgis, who is also 29 laps down. They're going to get by him. But, man, the 26 of Mondo Vargas, dude, he is tattooed out there. Just trying to get everything he can get. Yeah, that car uh, definitely uh, grabbing down the uh, down the straightaways or sidewinding, whatever you want to call it. That car was uh, out of whack, you know what I'm saying? So uh, just trying to get out there and get, it, get some eye racing or uh, eye rating points. So I uh, can't blame him for that. Can't fault him for, uh, for that. And they're doing a good job getting out of the way. But your uh, top two, Jesse, have pulled out by almost four seconds over third spot. Casey Malone right now as they cross the stripe. We got 25 laps to go in this thing, and top two running nose and tail. Yeah, man, I think uh, with 25 to go, let's take a quick through the field as we look up front, man. We've been watching these guys. Dustin Montgomery leads the way in the 16. You got Michael Conti right behind him in the five, and these dudes are definitely the, the, the pair of rabbits. Yeah, absolutely. And running back in third, Casey Malone, been on a tear all night long, had to work for a few spots, but uh, right now, three. Point seven seconds behind your uh, your leaders right now as they cross the stripe and the time running out. He needs to call some try to get called back up. Just... And Paul Kashiba in the four car, I tell you, that's another one that's been on the move as well. We, we've seen him make it three wide down into the corner, get a two for one. That car is hooked up here on the long run as well, running in four spot, and uh, he's just trying to Follow Casey Malone. He also, uh, all these guys back here, they need a caution. Try to get caught back up. That four car strong here at the late going. 
Yeah, and back behind that pair, you got a big group back here starting with Chris Orland. He's running fifth in the eight car. Back behind him, you got the 27 and Trevor Edwards in sixth. Yeah, Brandon Atkinson, he is going to be uh, in the seventh spot right now. He's decided to uh, settle in, try to follow the 27 and Trevor Edwards. He is another one with a, uh, as you say, Jesse, a big number on the roof. So it looks like it could be a big I-rating game for the 24 Brandon Atkinson. Whoa, as Trevor Edwards gets loose in front of him, man. Big time slide from the 27. Looks like uh, Brandon Atkinson going to pick up the spot right now. But, uh, you know, yeah, picks up a spot. So uh, move the 24 of Atkinson up one spot in the six. These guys are going to pick up some uh, I-rating points here if they can just hold on for another 22 laps. Oh, absolutely, man. You got Matt Witt back there. He's back in eighth right behind these two. And, uh, you know, he, he's, uh, he was up front, man. It looks like he's starting to get going again. His lap times have come back down. So I'm not sure if he's just kind of taking a little breather on the tires, getting ready for a last run here in the final 15. I've left keep our eye on the one of Matt Witt, who's usually pretty, pretty strong. He's a mile and a half tracks. Yeah, Dwayne Benson, the LSU Chevrolet. Uh, unfortunate for LSU this year in the championship game. Not sure what happened to the uh, Tigers there, but uh, nonetheless, uh, Dwayne Benson giving it a good run inside the top ten, running in ninth right now. is uh, Kind of it, that's where he's run all night long, so uh, going to be a good run, good finish, good solid night for the uh, 11 of L uh, uh, Excuse me, Dwayne Benson. Yeah, back behind him, you got Dylan Duvall, man. He's sitting, he's around your top ten right now. Just had a big wiggle off of turn four, trying to hang on to that spot. And, uh, you know, Bill Durant back there looking for that spot right behind him. Those guys run 10th and 11th right there. Yeah, Thomas Smith, he is in the 12th spot right now in that Budweiser Chevrolet as he heads down into turn number three. Uh, he's been, he ran up front, but uh, right now, what I've heard over the radio doesn't seem to have the long run set that he was hoping for right now and just trying to hold on. Uh, maybe a late caution he can come in and hit and uh, try to pick up some spots on a restart or something right now, but running in the 12th spot solidly. Yeah, right behind him is A.J. Brown about, well, about three quarters of a second back on a 7 tenths, man. A.J. Brown in the 23, running 13th place with Kenneth Dancer right on his tail. Richard Doucette in the 14, that play seat Chevrolet. Remember, play seat, man, you go and put their sponsor on your car as your primary sponsor. You run, uh, I forget how many races it is, official races, you're automatically entered to uh, to win a play seat. And I can tell you, I use a play seat as well, and it is definitely an advantage. So uh, get play seat on your car and uh, run the amount of races that you need to to get entered, and uh, hopefully you'll be the lucky one to win. But, man, he makes a little bit of contact off the turn two wall. But, nonetheless, Richard Doucette running in the 15th spot right now. Yeah, David Homstock in the 19 running back to kind of his own world right now. He's a second behind Richard. He's got three seconds to the guy behind him. That's uh, David Comstock running 16th place right there. Landon Huffman in the number 22 car. He was up front involved in a caution member earlier down into turn number one. Spun the car. Nobody collected him. He collected a little bit of the wall. Crew got that car patched up and uh, back out there trying to make the best of it as he gets a little bit of the wall coming out of turn number two. Trying to widen the track out for his teammates here, but uh, nonetheless, 22 running in 17 spot. Yeah, and you got 21 right on his tail there. That's Brandon Bowie. He was involved in an earlier wreck as well. And right up behind them is going to be the 12 of Justin Brooks in that little group. Alex Siembron in the number 15, the tap out Chevrolet. Jesse, you should like that sponsorship. He is going to be running in the 20th spot, rounding out your top 20 right now. Looks like the car is a little tight. That's what he is uh, radioing to the crew. Car is definitely tight going into the corners. And uh, going to have to make some adjustments. If we get a uh, caution flag, try to make the best of it. But a solid night right now. And behind him, Brandon Six. Man, now I'll tell you, that's a name right there, Brandon Six. Uh, they run in the 21st spot uh, as he crosses the line in that Budweiser Chevrolet. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Mrs. Man. That is, in fact, the name. <laughs> that's a cool name right there, isn't it, man? Brandon yeah. Six. Dude, I like I'm... that, dude. That is cool as hell. 
I don't know if you was around, man, but I've seen the show. We've been uh, covering a guy the last few weeks, man, Scoot Johnson. <laughs> He's not here tonight, but that's one of my favorite names, guys. <laughs> they got John Bunton, Brian Norton, and Ron Hart. They're going to round out the rest of you guys in the lead lap, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, respectfully. Those guys have all been involved in some issues. Not too happy with the cars, but there's your field. There you have it. 15 to go right now. Still up front. No change. Dustin Montgomery showing the way. Michael Conti about two tenths back, hanging right there. And, uh, you know, running just as fast right now for the most part is uh, Case Malone and Paul Kashima running in a pair third and fourth. It's balanced out. Those two are as quick as our leaders, but they, you know, they, they've got three and a half, well, nearly four second gap between them. So, yeah, should this thing stay green, it looks like this race is definitely going to come down to our top two runners right here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, no radio communication between them. Uh, they had his crew. Uh, he is just focused right now in that race car, trying to chase down the 16, trying to size him up, and uh, been running behind him for a while. I'm sure he has him sized up, but just trying to figure out where maybe he is better than the 16 to maybe make a run here. So we got 12 laps to go, working lap 88 of 100 here at Kentucky Speedway down the back stretch. As he closes in just a little bit on the back stretch, closes in down into turn number three. But that 16, he has some forward bite, Jesse James, and getting off those corners really good. Yeah, he really, really does. You're absolutely right. Uh, Conti's hanging in there tough, man, but you're right, man. The 16 looks like he gets off the corner so well. And uh, it really, you know I mean, really rips down the straightaway as a result of that. A lot of speed, a lot of momentum. And even with the draft, you know, it's tough for the five to do a whole lot right now. Ooh. We'll have to wait and see. I mean, you got, we're going to have 11 to go this time this track. That's more than 15 miles left on this track, and a lot can happen here. But uh, right here, it's looking pretty good. And, you know, throughout the field, if you peek through the field, you kind of see the same thing. It's kind of almost like a businessman. It's kind of like the calm before the storm throughout the field. Guys are spotting the guys that they think they have a shot at. They're taking a breather on the tires right now getting ready to make that final charge is right now it looks like the 10 of Phil Jury is looking to make that charge on the 11 of Dwayne Vincent nothing going to happen just yet Dwayne Vincent able to hang on to ninth place but that's about the closest thing you got right now on the track to a, a battleship as they go yeah, again absolutely. Now, added, yeah absolutely out of turn number 2 Phil Jury making a move on that number 11 Chevrolet down into turn number 3 they're going to be side by side a uh, battle for the ninth spot, and uh, right now, give it to Phil During out of turn number four. Great pass, professional pass, is uh, set him up out of two, made the pass out of four. That's how you do it, this case. Ten four, and then back behind him, they're starting it after him now. The six and the 25 side by side for a position right there. That's going to be for, looks like, 12th place, and then back behind them, AJ Brown in the 23, the 14 of Richard Dustin. That's getting action packed. My goodness, he's got a little phone booth right here, businessman. 25 is going to prevail for now. He's the rabbit, but I tell you what, he's got some rabbit dogs right behind him. Yeah, absolutely. The 14 of Richard Doucette in that place. He's Chevrolet making a move right now on the 6 of Thomas Smith. Side by side as they cross the stripe. Smith had the advantage that time. A.J. Brown is trying to figure out who he's going to go with. Somebody make a move. I'm ready to go. But you're absolutely right. This is a phone booth. And uh, looks like the 6 of Thomas Smith, he's going to run out of change. <laughs> He stuck his hand down there. All he come up out of the pocket with was Lynn on that one. But, uh, you know, he's still in the fight. And now they get him single filed out. They swapped around a bit. It looks like right now the 25 of Kenneth Dancer, he's going to be the rabbit. That's for 12th position. And uh, they got a long ways to go to get to the next guy, Dylan DeWall. So it looks like those four will probably be battling all the way to the close of this race for that 12th spot and everything between there. I'm looking now, let's see. We got uh, Brandon Atkinson looking to the inside of uh, Chris Oberlin. That's going to be for top five right there. As the 24 gets down there, and he's going to get him. Going down to turn three, and now back behind, it looks like 27 to Trevor Edwards. Looking to work over the one, but nothing happening just yet. Here comes the eight, though. Look at the eight. Look at the run the eight's got down, down the front stretch. Yeah, absolutely. And I tell you what, Brandon Atkinson, uh, man, he's one of those ones with the Big number on the roof, trying to make a big eye rating gain here. And if you notice that number eight car looking to the inside out of turn number two, uh, he's got the black stripes on the back. So that's uh, one of your uh, WDC drivers. It looks like he is uh, under fire from the one of Matt Witt right now. 
Quinton makes the pass, slides off through three and four, so the eight moving backwards right now. Here comes the 27 of uh, Trevor Edwards. We interviewed him. Not going to be able to mount a charge right now, but man, what a great run by the 24 of Brandon Atkinson here with five laps to go. He is going to stand to uh, gain a lot of eye rating points. Oh, absolutely. The eight, eight, big slide. Chris is right. Oh, my God. He made bad situation right there look not so bad at all the eight of chris overman just made a fantastic save on very very old tires really good stuff but you know what he's going to have some build up on that right rear so he's going to have his hands full for five laps to go dustin montgomery now is closing in on having about a half of a half of a second lead it looks to me that the five of michael Conte just can't get down the way he could before and the 16 still can He's getting down. He's boogieing right here. We'll see, man. It's, it's down to it now. If you got something, you got to go. When they hit this stripe right here, if the caution comes out, this race is over. And everybody knows it. So throughout the field, now is time. Get what you can get right here, right now. Yeah, absolutely. I tell you what, I got to give props to the uh, the leader, Dustin Montgomery, in that 16 car. He has not missed a mark since he has moved into the top spot right now. Michael Conte has done everything he can. It looks like they're coming up on to uh, a, a lap car right now. So this may, uh, you know, this lap car, depending on uh, how he decides to play, it may play a factor in this. They're going to cross the stripe. We're going to be working lap number 98 of 100 right now. And I tell you, Conte moved in just a little bit that time, Jesse, right to the back bumper. Maybe Conte was saving something. Here he comes out of turn number yeah, he's right. He is right there, man. He is definitely. We talk, I talked about it earlier. We talked about ice in the veins earlier, keeping your cool. And, and, you know, you nailed it. Dustin Montgomery, man, he has been sharp. He's been focused. But so has Michael Conte. Both these guys. Oh, a little bit of a slide there by the five. He gets a little bit of the wobbles, but he gathers it up and doesn't even lose momentum. Two to go this time by. It'll be the white flag for Dustin Montgomery next time. Got to get caution. around this. Oh, caution. Oh, down. it's this over. race is over, Montgomery wins. Yeah, Montgomery's going to get it behind the pace car. It's unfortunate, man. I I think he might have had it anyways. We'll never know. He looked I right, racing. We need green, white, checker. Absolutely. 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 I agree Please with Please give me green, white, checker, I racing. Uh. <laughs> I'll vote for that, man, because that would have been, uh, been a slobber knocker for green, white, checkers for sure. So that's going to that's gonna do it. As it's lap 99 right here, they're going to be getting the white flag behind the pace car right here. They're going to come around one more time, and Dustin Montgomery then can begin to celebrate his win here. He really probably should have been. I mean, he should have been the winner in the first top split race we did this season at Texas. Comes back, runs another one finally in the final race of the season in the top split coverage, and he gets his win. So despite how he got it, he, he ran a fantastic – I mean, despite the pace car coming out here, I don't know that it really – puts any kind of blemish on Dustin Montgomery's run. That was a fantastic run by Dustin Montgomery. He had to work his way through traffic, three wide situations. He had a couple wobbles, made some contact with the guys lightly. And, you know, I mean, it was not a easy race. But just like you said, Parter, once he got to that lead, oh, my goodness, he was, I mean, he was pitcher perfect. You know what I mean? I mean, he didn't give Michael Conti any opportunities in, in that run there once he got the lead. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we sit here and beg for a green-white checker, and, and man, I tell you, that's what the fans want. Uh, it would have been exciting, but like you said, this caution does not blemish what uh, Dustin Montgomery did. He, he worked his way into the top spot, and when he got there, Jesse, he hit his marks lap after lap after lap, and Michael Conte just couldn't, didn't have enough and, and couldn't couldn't get up there and make a challenge on him. Dustin Montgomery had the car tonight, and the best car won, and that's the 16 of Dustin Montgomery. Congratulations. Yeah, absolutely. If you're wondering uh, if you're wondering what the caution was for, I don't know if the cameraman's got it or not, but I just went back and looked at it. It was the LSU car, the 11 of Dwayne Vincent's going to come in there and use up the 10 of Phil Jerry and absolutely dump him uh, coming to the last lap, and it's going to collect several other cars as well. But the 10 of Phil Jury, and he's going to drop from uh, 9th place to 24th on that tough, tough Like A.J. Brown takes a big hit, the 14 of Richard Dustin. We were watching. He gets caught up in that. So not sure how they're all going to work out. We're waiting to see who's got the meat and the dreaded meatball flag as uh, they come through. It looks to be turn 3 and 4. 
live here. Turn three and four. Pace car coming around. This is going to be it right here. Dustin Montgomery is going to add his name to the list of Friday night official B-Car Showdown race winners. Remember, next season, we're going to Thursday nights. Thursday nights, same bad channel, same bad time, just a different day. 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific. That's how we're going to That's how we're gonna do it next season. We'll keep you posted on time changes when we spring forward on the clock. We'll probably roll back. We'll keep you posted on that, man. And, uh, but, yo, Dustin Montgomery, my goodness. Good job, man. Hope you uh, hope you remember to do a burnout because we're watching you right here, buddy. <laughs> Good win. Michael Conti going to come in second. Jason Malone coming in third. Paul Kashiba coming in fourth. Brandon Atkinson going to round the top five. Matt Witten in the one. He's going to come in sixth place. Seventh going to go to Chris Orwell and Trevor Edwards. Eighth. Dylan Duvall in the nine going to finish ninth. After starting on the pole. Kenneth Dancer in the 25. He's going to come in tenth. And that was a big points race there for Kenneth Dancer then, who's, uh, who was in some really tight yeah. battles. Yeah, and absolutely, and Jesse, real quick, uh, i tell you what, I know we're in a hurry here, but, uh, man, great run by the 24, Brandon Atkinson, uh, you know, coming in here, 24th, and, you know, as far as the I rating's concerned, great gain for him, and uh, good to see that uh, for that driver, and also for the, uh, Trevor Edwards, uh, 27, uh, you know, a rated driver in the field, going to finish 8th tonight, great job for those, guys, those drivers. Yeah, man, and, you know, I mean, it, it's Dustin, Dustin Montgomery's night for sure, no doubt about it, but, I, you know, I'm going to give a shout-out to Boss House Motorsports. They finished third, fourth, fifth, and eighth, man. You got, you know, four guys in the top eight right there, so uh, outstanding showing by all those guys for sure. Surely enough, Dustin Montgomery's the man. He's doing the burnouts down there in the U.S. Army car, getting it done. The vet, Dustin Montgomery, for sure. We're going to be up for him next season. <laughs> Everybody's doing the Everybody wants on ETV, Jesse. I hear you. There you Everybody, go. Everybody's celebrating something out there, man. It's uh, Friday the 13th. The race is over. All right. Good stuff, <laughs> Friday man. We'll, the 13th. Uh, we'll keep you posted on uh, next season, or excuse me, next week. We'll, we'll figure out what we got going on with these official point standings. It looks like Armando Vargas, despite the fact that he had a very rough night, will probably still be your your top split champion. I, I don't want to say that for sure yet, but I'm pretty sure because the only guy who could probably take it was E.J. O'Rourke and David Cater. David Cater wasn't here. E.J. O'Rourke had major trouble and finished right there by Armando Vargas. So Armando Vargas most likely going to be your top split uh, official B-Car Showdown Series champion. So congratulations to him, and we'll touch bases on that next week. From my partner up here at the booth, man, get used to him. We're going to be working Sunday nights. Don't forget, Sunday night, Road to Pro starts week one next season. Every week, 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific, we're going to be covering the mega split Sunday night, a car race. And as those guys, they're going to go for pro, try to finish top 12 in points and get, get the thing done. Going to be all kinds of excitement right here beside my partner, the businessman, Sean Fickle. You got... The legendary one, the bad boy, working the cameras in there, man. Production legend. You got Jerry the Corndog Wolf bringing us uh, alternate cameras and replays, man. Thanks to all those guys. I'm the outlaw, Jesse James. We'll see you right here on ETV next week.